Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. We've got a map for you that we do not see every day. This is the Bermuda Locket, one of the original maps to Supreme Commander, and it is a highly interesting one. It's large, very large. I believe this is like a 20k landmass, if I'm not totally mistaken. And it's got all of these necks connecting these land masses, tons of reclaim. You can see large boulders littering the landscape and the potential for Navy inside the ring or outside the ring. So you've got to continually scout, see where your opponent is at so that you don't fall behind in Navy in or out. And Hover is definitely going to have an advantage. We've got Black Death, who is 1747 in ladder rank, and he is going Cybrant. That's going to give him a slight advantage in Navy because he has the really super strong T2 Navy and that's going to be highly effective on a map like this where basically you can reach the entire landmass with the Salem Destroyers. And then we have Shades of Blue who is taking UEF. I forgot to say the disadvantage. That would be no hover. If he gets pushed out of the water, unless he can regain access with air, he is pretty much royally screwed. On the north side, we have Shades of Blue, who's going to have the weaker T2 Navy, but he does have Hover to make up for it, and then he will be able to um, master the T3 Navy if he gets to that point, if this game goes that long. One other advantage for Cybern is the fact, ah, we've already got la uh, naval factories laid down. He will be able to walk Salem's across the neck here, um, not anywhere else, but in any of these four passes here, he will be able to walk from the inside to the outside or vice versa. So his navy will be very versatile. All right, let's examine these build orders and see what we got in store for us. We've got manual, not manual, uh, attack moves set for a couple of these engineers. They're gonna start sucking up some mass in the back. Gotta get your power online before you start sucking up that mass. Otherwise you will be horrifically and totally stalled. Lots of power generators going down. Early air factory, which is very, very critical on a map of this size. Sometimes when you're hanging around in the lower ranks, it doesn't really matter that much. But on this rank level, drops, bombing, and that kind of thing, the subtler, finer points of gameplay are going to pretty much decide the outcome of the game. And then, of course, there is the oh-so-critical scouting. So... We'll just have to see which of these guys can implement their builds and combat better. Patrol over here on all of these rocks. We'll have to check the reclaim counter at five minutes just to see who's ahead on that because I'm telling you there are boatloads of reclaim here. We've got a... holy cow, that's a convoluted... Okay, that is a scout. I was about to say, is that an engineer? What the crap is that? But no, that is a air scout that's going to be patrolling over here to keep track of unit movements in the right-hand side of the map. We've got a very, very similar build going down for Black Death. He is putting down loads and loads of T1 power generators. Got plans for it looks like four air factories and only one land factory to begin with. He is going to be dropping land factories in the expansions as he spreads out. That's going to allow him to maintain a presence. This factory is going to have a very high amount of health for T1 stuff. 3,500 health on that factory. That means a single pass of the T1 bomber is not going to kill it like it will with engineers and some tanks. And uh, it's going to give you an opportunity to rebuild even if most of your other stuff gets wiped out. Definitely want to lay down those factories whenever you can. When you got a single engineer straggling its way all around to all of these mass extractors, that thing dies. Well, you're not going to have anything else to expand within that area for a long time because it's got to travel from all the way over here. So honestly, I would have set down a land factory somewhere in that vicinity if it were me playing, but obviously it's not, so we're just going to deal with it and assume that the 1700 rated player knows what he's doing. Here we go with a couple of mech marines. I know it's very late to get mech marines out, but when you have a map this spread out, those guys are actually going to be able to not only cover an early engineer heading out, but pretty much run the entire neck in a very short period of time and hopefully reach engineers before something more deadly comes along. Not guaranteeing that they will, but that's the entire idea. Looks like we got four interceptors online for Shades of Blue. Was that four? That was three. Blatant miscounting, I am an idiot. Three interceptors and a bomber, and then we have four interceptors, no bomber, 
for Black Death on the south side. But he does have a couple of air factories cranked up now. We have a bomber loading in that one. Engineer building there. And Interceptor there. So we're looking at a fairly similar air build. Three airs, two lands, and three airs, one land, and a second going down. All right, time to check in with the Reclaim counter. Shades of Blue pulling in a whopping 2,600 mass already. And we've got 2,500 for Black Death. It looks like both of these guys are choking for power, as should be expected when you have a map like this. But it looks like they are compensating to balance for it not even scrape the tip of the mass potential in this map <laughs> building t1p gens left and right and adjacency is critical there's the first transport of the game oh nope i lied we've already got one up and loaded for black death he is going to skirt all the way around the outside edge but he's gonna lose all of his interceptors so he's gonna have to keep an eye on that transport and make sure that it does not cross the paths of those because it will go down in flames. Frigate is out for Black Death. That's going to mean quite a bit because Cybern Frigates are the rulers of the T1 Navy. They are by far the best frigate. And if he can push a few of those across the map, he should be able to shut down naval production completely fairly early in the game. Already got three frigates and the first one is about to come out for Shades of Blue. So. He could potentially get a naval rush in here, and it would work. T1 Bomber took out that Engineer right there, just as he was moving to build a radar, it looks like. But he did get a factory down. Kudos to him for getting that thing built. If he can kill that T1 Bomber so it stops locking the factory, he will be able to restart his claiming of the territory, but it looks like he's already online. Got a T1 point defense down. Drop these four engineers all the way over here on the outside edge. I'm gonna throw down a ton of land factories. And I do mean a literal ton. Well, maybe not entirely. Four land factories, which is no feeble amount. And here come the mech marines. Seven minutes into the game, and here they come. Bet you never thought you'd see any this late in the game still alive. They're going to run directly by the engineer that they were trying to kill and right into the welcoming embrace of Black Death's commander accompanied by a handful of tanks. Sadly, those brave marines do not stand a chance in hell. And yeah, excellent placement of your units. I bet that sand dune's really feeling the hurt right now. <laughs> I was wondering why I was hearing continuous firing from a mech marine, but yeah, that would be the reason. Just chilling out. We've got a perfectly good mass extractor right there that he could hit. Or that one, for that matter. Even that one. I think they're all in range, but no, he's aiming for the only one that is on the other side of a dune. We've got a lot of build power in for Shades of Blue. He has seen the Cyber Navy, and he has seen the face of fear. He is loading up all of his engineers on these factories and getting out as many frigates as he possibly can as fast as he can. Already got five in the water, but Black Death is still ahead. He doesn't have quite as much production online though, so I think that Shades of Blue will surpass him in naval strength very, very quickly, especially considering the fact that he is pulling in more mass per tick. However, let's see what the reclaim says. 7,200, holy smokes and Black Death with 7,100. So they are neck and neck in the reclaim game, and Shades of Blue is slightly ahead in real eco. T1 subs are something that you don't see built every day, but hey, when you're having a frigate war, T1 subs can actually make a tremendous difference in the outcome because they will deal damage while not taking damage, and then your opponent is going to have to react because he has no subs. As long as you can keep those T1 subs away, until you get several of them online, that will be a nasty, nasty surprise for your opponent. I know that I have said many times in the past, and I firmly believe that the T1 sub is inferior to frigates because they deal damage so slowly. If you have five or six of them at once, they can be the deciding factor in a frigate battle. We've got a drop moving around the outside edge. It looks like it's gonna drop directly on that factory. He better not. If he doesn't have it scouted, no, he does have it scouted. Now, I was about to say, the transport may actually attempt to drop literally on top of the factory, and then all of those units will die, and that would be a sad, sad day. 
Black Death being hyper aggressive with that commander. He's going to push it all the way over into the left side expansion. Hopefully he will take that thing by sheer force of will. When you're this early in the game and you have a very slow string of tanks coming out from a handful of factories, the ACU is actually the god of this world. It will be able to eliminate all of those targets without much trouble, and it has the HP to tank any of the damage handed out by these artillery and whatnot. Hopefully he does have gun upgrade, though. I don't think he does. No, he doesn't, because there is a T1 point defense there, which will take two overcharges to kill. Black Death is going to finally claim the right-hand side of the map, and that will make for 50-50 map control, although the sky is definitely owned by Shades of Blue. He has got a nice, tidy little bundle of interceptors that is quickly closing on that Jester. Well, no, I didn't see that. My bad, folks. Black Death actually has more. They were all landed right here, and I was not paying the slightest bit of attention, so don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Ant is finally going to take down these land factories, and that will be the end of that. 50-50 map control. That uh, transport is just kind of hanging out there. Not sure what's planned for that. ACU dropping a T2 upgrade right in the path of oncoming units with no tank support. Why? Why, my good sir? Because I have Jester support, that's why. So he will be able to harass these incoming tanks. Hopefully he can pick off the T1 artillery because that is the real danger here. You gotta watch those Jesters though. That one is on 2,500 health, or 25 health out of 500. My bad, that was a terrible misspeak. Um, the Jesters do actually have a flight ceiling low enough. The T1 artillery will impact it if they are fired with the gesture in the way. Trying to see the arc of a shot, but it is not currently looking like anything is firing much. Oh well. We shall not see it this game, but that's okay. T1 point defense going down, catching any tanks that are dumb enough to come close. And Black Death will be able to just basically walk up, plant a Cerberus turret right on the top of that sand dune there and kill off all of these factories without too much trouble. I think he will be successful in this endeavor. As far as Navy goes, we have got, looks like naval advantage goes to Shades of Blue at this point. So yes, air control. We've got a tiny, tiny handful of interceptors up there and about 20 interceptors or so for Black Death. Black Death owns the skies, but he does not own the water. Looks like 10 frigates and about 6 T1 subs, but we do have a T2 upgrade which is not currently running, so we'll have to see what goes on with that. Cerberus turret, as predicted, is going to be built right there, immediately come under arty fire, somebody needs to run forward and either target the artillery or retarget the Cerberus on it. Nope, too late, it is dead. T1 point defense going down. It's immediately going to get hammered by that artillery. Come on, Black Death, kill the friggin' thing. That's what you're here for, isn't it? We have a T1 incursion happening on the right side. There's a mobile flak with it, though, which means we have a T2 factory somewhere. There's a support factory. That means there's a... There's the HQ. Right there, T2 power going down. Black Death going to climb to 1.6k income. We have a T2 air factory. Four Shades of Blue, who has not hit T2 land yet. It doesn't look like he's going to go with the T2 air option. And will he regret it? I know not. He also has T2 Navy, which gives him a cruiser. Holy crap, that was a bad voice break. Um, that means that the air superiority of Black Death is not long for this world because that one little flight over the cruisers is going to heavily impact his interceptor numbers. He needs to stay clear of this little mass of navy here. Otherwise, he is going to have a very, very bad time with his air. T1 artillery moving up to the front. Gotta lay down some fire on these T1 point defense that are being built like mad. If he just moved this entire group into the back here, he would be away from the navy and not be taking any fire. But apparently, he is content to sit. Well, the frigates are actually hitting the rocks mostly, so not that big of a deal. Salem coming out, and another under production. T1 subs being built on the left. Looks like Black Death is pulling in 93 mass per tick with a very well-balanced eco. And Shades is pulling in 50-ish mass per tick. That is a huge discrepancy. 
Hold on, 93. I must be reading this wrong. 65. There we go. Good dealio. 15k for Black Death in Reclaim and 18k for Shades of Blue. So Shades of Blue is behind in Eco but ahead in Reclaim by a fairly substantial amount. T1 Artillery is focus firing the point defense, as it very well should. While the Mantis move around to the back and try to harass some of this crap in there. Finally get our naval engagement. It looks like the numbers favor Shades of Blue by a dramatic amount, but the manner in which he was streaming those units in allowed a lot of his frigates to be killed while taking while Black Death was basically taking no losses. So he is going to get a Salem online. That's going to be laying down some cover fire, but if these frigates reach the Salem, the frigates will win mass for mass. No problemo. The only advantage that the Salem has is the range. So if you don't kite, don't use your range, frigates are going to win. We're also seeing a massive T1 push over here. Black Death was unseated. He does have Renegades on the task. He's got four gunships so far, but it looks like he just was not able to maintain with this tiny, tiny little firebase. All of those land factories were able to sweep him off of his feet, and he's going to get pushed clear back to the base, I think. T2 transport coming out. <clears throat> And this is going to be a beautiful mass dump directly in the base. Now you may be saying, why on earth is Shades of Blue sacrificing all of his frigates? Well, I see what he's trying for, but I know that he is not going to succeed and it is sad to watch. He's trying to get a factory lock with these cruisers. If he can focus fire them on the T2 naval factory, there's a cruiser. It's not going to be able to catch all of attack missiles. Oh, he's firing on the build power. Rapola. That is every bit as devastating. He's trying to kill off some of those engineers so that units do not flow as quickly, but that was most definitely not worth the amount of mass that he left in Black Death's corner. Black Death is running with a basically full health ACU. He's going to be able to focus fire with the Salem's and the Sirens. Well, they are going to bypass, apparently not concerned with the units that are coming. ACU can take them, no worries at all. T2 transport standing by, but is not going to pick up that ACU. Because the ACU is totally hunky-dory. Point defense coming online, but unfortunately it is a tiny bit too late. Because a lot of those tanks are going to slip past. Hopefully the rear guard of Mantis will be able to do something about this situation. T2 Transport picking up some engineers and flying them over. Going to be headed over in this here direction. Now this is a problem. Even if you have T2 Navy, there is a limited amount of access to the build power because of this rock formation. You will actually have to move up basically on the beach and fire through this channel because if he tries to fire right there, the rocks are going to prevent hits on the factories, as you can see with those impacts. Very nicely designed map with some interesting little features here and there. Alas, I probably would fail miserably trying to play it because my APM is kind of low, which is not such a big deal, but I don't really use my APM that wisely, so I tend to get worked around on maps such as this. Good lord, the T1 bombers, holy cow. Why they're all going to that one spot and not attacking anything, I will never quite figure out. But they are spreading now, and it looks like they are all focus fired on a single Mantis. That move order has been cancelled. Now they're free to roam as they see fit. But load of engineers headed out for Shades of Blue. That transport is going to drop them. Not there, because there's Mantis on the way. <clears throat> Actually halfway decent guns on those T2 transports. Nothing anywhere approaching a T1 bomber, but halfway respectable. That transport can kill a few T1 tanks before it drops units off. And with the help of some T1 bombers, it should make short work of all of these. Definitely need to prevent them getting into the base. This is a little more worrisome though. We do have T2 tanks moving in. A single Medusa is all the artillery support that this group has. Oh, look at that. Wagner's dipping into the water. Wagners are fun. 
It looks like they were debating... Maybe that was a break-in formation. That's probably what that was. It would be awesome to see Wagner's headed through the water, but I just don't think it's going to happen at this point. These tanks on this hill are hilarious. It it's like they're ants clinging to the side of a pile of dirt, and no one can hit anything because terrain is a thing. The ACU can't hit anything. The tanks can barely hit the mass extractor. It what? What is this madness? And the gunships are actually doing a surprising amount of damage before the interceptors finally take them out. Well, this is fun. Building a naval base way off to the side. Does Shades of Blue know that is there? No, he does not. So he has absolutely no inkling whatsoever that there is Navy started on the outside edge. And it looks like he still does not have T2 land in his base. Or at all, for that matter. He has decided that T2 land is not necessary. And holy crap, the Kamikaze planes... Since he's still at T1, that means he doesn't have any hover, so he's going to have to build Navy or upgrade a T2 factory to deal with anything on the outside. If Black Death is able to get some units up, this could potentially be devastating for Shades of Blue because he just won't have anything to deal with this mess. If I were Black Death, I would put that on hold fire and wait till I got a second one and then zip all the way around to the back side of the base. Well, actually, a destroyer and a cruiser online because you know that they're going to try an air assault. We know that these T2 gunships are here. Does Black Death? He probably doesn't. I don't think. Black Death is having trouble keeping track of all of the tanks. They are kind of slipping through the cracks. I'm not entirely sure what his deal is with his method of choke pointing. If he had a single Cerberus turret behind him, just one, like right there. Then he could build one in the front, and once he got like three online, that stream of T1 units would not be able to do anything. Well, he only lost two mass extractors, it looks like. He's got very heavy damage to a few more, but he only lost two. He is pulling 87 mass per tick. He's probably reclaimed his navy, though, so we got 28 thousand reclaim at the 20 minute mark and 35,000 for shades of blue holy kishmoles what is going on here shades of blue it looks like he is scraping his sides clean those are mushrooms by the way not rocks it looks like he is completely reclaiming all of the territory that he can there's still a handful of rocks on the outside edge here that he just simply has not gotten to yet this is a frustrating fight here when you have Cybern T2 Navy versus UAF T1 because it just seems like you can't get in range of anything and then if you try to rush them, those OP frigates wipe you out. Basically, with UEF, you're playing a survival game until T3. Your T2 is probably going to lose to most of the other factions, but once you hit that T3 stage, the battle cruisers more than make up for it. Engineer sitting on the outside edge wondering if we're seeing a naval factory planned at some point not entirely sure probably could be a attack move order placed out in the water that could very well be it now I say that about UEF Navy fully realizing that if you're only talking about one or two destroyers versus another pair of destroyers um, the Valiant actually does pretty dang well for itself especially if you have a bulwark in the water anything to help you close that range because once it gets in range it has a decent trajectory, it's reasonably hard to dodge, and it has incredibly high firepower. The DPS is huge on it compared to the other destroyers because it doesn't have any torpedo defense. So that is something very handy. Also, you can see that it has 7,200 health versus just over 6,000 for the Cybern Destroyer. The problem is when you're not in range. That is where the problem arises. And the range becomes a bigger issue when you have a lot of units on the field. So we're still pumping out T2 units. No plans for T3 as of yet. 
these destroyers, however, are going to have a heyday. Well, destroyer and siren. Killing off the build power back here. As good a target as any you can choose. And again with the cliff thing. You gotta watch that on this map. First, you gotta watch terrain on any map, but especially on this one. I have seen so much damage wasted this game. Alright, cruisers sustaining fire against these units. That's something you have to be very careful about when you're taught when you're going versus UEF Navy. You may be thinking, oh, it's just a cruiser, three tack missiles, four tack missiles, it doesn't make a big deal. Well, the cru UEF cruisers are very front loaded because they fire fewer projectiles. So when those few projectiles hit, they have a pretty dang devastating effect. And I just noticed that both the anti-air and the tack missiles fire in sets of four. It's kind of funny, actually. All right, engagement on the front lines. We've got ranks of T1 subs out in front because there are no Coopers and there's only T two T1 subs way the hell over here. These subs are pretty much going to have free reign. The only problem is these cruisers that can, are continually firing back into the base. This single, well, there are two, but this is the only one in range and is now dead. That is not going to be enough kill off all of the UEF tax pouring in. You can see the poor build power going up in flames. When you've only got four naval factories and a handful of engineers assisting them, even if your eco is bigger, which it is, no it's not, which it is not, even if your eco is bigger, the other guy can potentially outproduce you. Well, let's actually take a look at the eco here. Black Death sitting on 36,000 reclaim and his reclaim is jumping around so much they can't actually tell it looks like about 99 mass per tick shades of blue sitting on around 128 with 41 in the bank from reclaim and that's going to be another naval win for black death the amount of mass sitting in this water is too damn high and that factory is no longer producing wonder what's up with that those guys are going to be headed up north though. What can they potentially hit anything from this side it looks like? There is a cliff that can offer some protection, but it is unfortunately on the other side of the base. So these guys will be able to just park off the edge here and hit anything in that base. I do apologize guys for the excessive yawning don't know what has got me so sleepy. T2 gunships coming in for Shades of Blue. That is actually an excellent reaction to the Cyber Navy, especially when there's no cruisers involved. Um, Cyber Navy does have a particularly strong anti-air on their destroyers and their frigates. However, the cruiser with its slow firing rate and slow projectile speed, which means it wastes a lot of its damage, um, the Cybern Cruiser sometimes has issues dealing with swarms of gunships, if there were even a cruiser to begin with. So gunships are not as bad an idea against Cybern as they are against shielded UEF or any kind of Aeon cruisers. Granted, they are going down, because there is some anti-air pouring in, but they're doing a substantial amount of damage before they decide to go, and this is hilarious! We have Corsairs and Torpedo Launchers killing off gunships. I have never, in the entire time I've been playing FA, I have never seen a Torpedo Launcher kill a gunship. And there it is, folks. Gunships touched down in the water. Torpedoes had a field day. That is awesome. All right, these guys are now on the outside edge, firing inwards. Not really picking any super critical targets at the moment. We do have a shield going down. Those engineers wisely trying to cover up the T2 power because that is a critical resource and the destroyers are wasting fire on engineers, which they can't even hit because cliffs. Ah, there we go. Finally got a good firing solution. I am astounded, absolutely flabbergasted that there has not been a Cooper built yet. 
100% destroyers and frigates versus subs is going to lose and lose very very hard because the torpedoes on the Valiant class suck. They put out like 30 DPS, which is terrible. If that, I don't even remember how much they do. Oh well, it's not completely important. All you need to know is that they suck. A single Cooper, two Coopers, would be able to deal with this no problemo. But as things sit, these T1 subs are just going to slowly and methodically chew through the UEF Navy. Holy kishmodies, that is terrifyingly frustrating. I'm not sure what the T2 point defense is about. Don't ask, because I don't know. T2 point defense in that exact location serves absolutely no purpose as far as I can tell. There are now torpedo bombers heading out. I don't think they're going to make much of a difference because Black Death seems to continually pull naval winds out of nowhere. Actually not out of nowhere, they do come from someplace substantial because the unit mix is terrible for Shades of Blue. But he is continually winning and Shades of Blue will never get the upper hand as long as he is not building something to deal with the subs. He's building an occasional T1 sub, but that is not going to help. Not in the slightest. ASF are online for Black Death. Let's check on the north. No, no T3. So that's going to give Black Death a tremendous advantage. He only has six ASF, but those are so mind-bogglingly superior to interceptors that you might as well just call it a day and go home. Turn back around for another pass. We may get an ASF death here, but you can see they're literally one shot killing the interceptors. And that is going to be that. Especially when the interceptors wing their way over flag. I cast the spell of disintegration on you. T3 P gen's going up. Man, Black Death is scaling up something fierce. And Shades of Blue is seemingly slacking off. I don't mean slacking off like, oh, I'm too lazy. I'm just not going to deal with this. He is past his peak on the curve. Let's put it that way. He started off so strong, and it seemed like Black Death was continually falling back. Shades of Blue had such superior reclaim income. That I have a hard time believing what's happening here, but it looks like Shades of Blue is having a little bit of an issue dealing with all of the stuff coming online. He is attempting a T3 air upgrade. That will help him out some. And the interior navy is looking halfway decent, but still, no Coopers, no T1 subs. I think if he would have built a couple Coopers by now, he would have easily, easily won this navy. But as things stand, he's just going to continue to take damages. Got rhinos over here on the left-hand side. Actually, correction, those are Wagners accompanied by a Salem laying down cover fire. Salem is going to cross the water into the center. Need that extra little bit of firepower to ward off Shades of Blue attacks. Shades of Blue's attacks. English is hard. And... That is a shame. Lots of Corsairs left to fall to their deaths, thanks to these two cruisers that were sitting in firing range. Oh, hello, Sirens. I do like the appropriate red color. It looks very good on you. We're gonna kinda track back here as you escape from the incoming frigates. Don't know why you're running, but whatever floats your boat. Of course, since those are cruisers, they may not necessarily be the best for dealing with frigates, but uh, you've got to take the hand you're dealt with. Three cruisers ought to be more than a match for that, for those frigates, though. More than a match. Again, we're seeing gaping holes in the build power over here. The cruisers focus firing engineers, focus firing on torpedo defense, and just generally causing carnage in the base. 
Unfortunately, we also have a cruiser focus fired on the Navy. We're going to see some impacts here. Maybe? That was very strange. I guess not. Let's take a check in again. We've got 51k in reclaim from Black Death, who is horrendously minus in the mass numbers. And then we've got 45,000 for Shades of Blue. So Black Death finally, finally passed Shades of Blue in mass income. And I really wish I knew what he was spending all that mass on. He is getting an ACU upgrade, possibly resource allocation, probably resource allocation. That would explain why he is so far behind on mass. So far into the negative on mass, I should say. No idea why these guys are running. Three frigates should not be terrifying to you. You're a big boy. You're a full-grown Navy. Deal with it. Deal with it like a man. Let's see, five Salem's versus one, two... Two destroyers on the blue side. That is actually very, very bad. Three destroyers on the blue side. They are going to pin this Salem off on its own. Poor little guy separated from the herd and taken down. But that's still not going to help the fact that there is a far superior T2 Navy waiting on the south side. I think it would be hilarious to see T3 Navy on the inside edge of the locket. That is something else that I've never seen before. I have seen a game where there was T3 on the outside of the locket, but never a game with T3 on the inside. That would be the equivalent, I think, of rushing a T4, because the T3 Navy is roughly, roughly equivalent in uh, damage output to mass cost ratios and usability of the units. The T3 Navy just kills things slower, has much more health and much less damage per mass than T4s do. Just in case you're curious, I know that I'm a curious kid and I do like knowing random things that uh, just random answers to questions that pop into my head. Alrighty then. Let's see, four destroyers on this count accompanied by a cruiser, five destroyers once that gets down here. That is versus five higher range destroyers, which are going to make life exceedingly difficult for Shades of Blue. All those destroyers are going to come on the front lines. They are stationary, though. Dodging is also helpful. But if they're just going to line up like a firing squad and chew a chunk out of the hide of Black Death, I think they may actually be able to, just through the superior firepower of the Valiants. But nope, more Salem's coming in from the factory in the back. Although that has been turned off now. It looks like those units are going to go into retreat. Three destroyers and one cruiser remaining. All the build power is gone. Where did all the build power go? Mighty frigate battle over there. This is kind of scary. I don't think it's actually going to accomplish anything, but it is nevertheless kind of scary. And what have we here up in the top corner? Corsairs and Strap Bombers. Here comes the Scout. The ACU is sitting way out in the open. Come on, buddy. Don't die to this. Don't die to this cheese. We've got a transport moving in. Those are Wagners, it looks like, dropping directly in the base. Holy smokes, that's awesome going to be able to wreck some stuff. Strap Bombers totally ignoring the ACU, which potentially could have been killed right there. And they are going to go after the T2 power. Power, of course, being critical to air production, so if he knocks that power offline, that is going to be the end of air for Shades of Blue. Bomber dropping. One-shot kill for the Cyber and Strat on those T2 P-Gens. A little bit of a stall there. One strap bomber is taking a bit of damage, but both of them are going to survive. Those Corsairs taking the brunt of that assault. Oh, there's cruiser fire as well. Cruiser coming in from the back. One more pass over the cruiser, and that guy is dead. Looks like he's going for the T3 HQ. 
and power. There's only two T2 power generators up and running. Shades of Blue does not have resource allocation. Repeat, does not have resource allocation. Knocked down to 2.3 power income. That means there is no potential for T3 air at this point. He's got T3 engineers building. It's going to allow him to get those PGENs online. At the same time, Black Death is up to 8.6 income and a full mass bar with which to do anything that he likes. And anything that he likes better include a solution to the Navy problem because the lack of build power is coming back to bite him in the butt just as predicted. Three T1 factories and one T2 with this many engineers is not an acceptable Navy build. He could be building so much more with that kind of income. Of course, he is also balancing some land unit production, so I guess it does kind of make sense because he's not playing a dedicated Navy position. Fifty-eight thousand mass reclaimed by Black Death. Seventy-three for Shades of Blue. Shades of Blue has climbed ahead by a monstrous margin once again. Corsair is coming in, trying to lay down some fire on these frigates. Not doing too well, actually. And there's finally a Cooper in the water. That is a sign that there were some Coopers that were finally able to overcome the T1 sub spam that Black Death was putting out. When those Strat Bombers came in, I thought it was GG, but it looks like Shades of Blue despite having a far inferior income we're talking about almost two-thirds less he was able to reclaim his way out of that situation this is slightly worrisome though although i don't know why black death is not parking these naval units over here where he has clear access for a firing solution i do not know and honestly at this point i'm yeah why why are you doing this? The power stall is real though. Sam's coming online to guard against that kind of thing happening again. T1 engineers healing up this PGEN to hopefully prevent it from going explodey. Definitely don't want to leave low health PGENs in your base as a recipe for disaster. Black Death actually has the income at the moment to drop a T or potentially, well, I think a megalith would be scouted and eliminated before it really got off the ground. All right, Salem's can walk on land. So this could be the chance to actually attack the naval production from the rear. When was the last time you saw that on a map, guys? When was the last time you saw naval production literally attacked from the back? It's about to happen right here. Well, if you can't get at the production from the front, why not go all the way around the outside of the map, all the way to the back, and just attack from that direction? With the short range uh, UEF destroyers, the Valiant class cannot reach it. And yes, I am just... Why are you pulling all of your engineers back into firing range? That is incredibly weird. And why are you running from engineers? You can kill them faster than they can reclaim you. Why are you running? I don't understand what's happening here. But whatever. Hey, if they want to do it, that is up to them. And goodness gracious alive, T1 point defense. I am extremely impressed with the ability of Shades of Blue to stay in this game as stalled as he has been for one resource or the other for this entire game. Right now he's power stalled by a margin of 14, 1500. He has reclaimed a whopping 84,000 mass versus 58 for Black Death. <laughs> you could say that he's a man of means by no means, king of the road. Or something like that. Oh, my voice is in rough shape. All right. That's what I get for singing all day at work. Today was actually a very fun day. 
I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to do true demolition work before, but besides it being fairly hard work, which is not that big of a deal to me, well, that's interesting. We have a torpedo commander chilling out in the water here. Not really much to fear from the UEF Navy and Wagner's running underneath. Holy cow, this is awesome. <laughs> I was doing demolition work today, which basically meant that I got to take a sledgehammer to lots and lots of things and destroy lots of things. And it's kind of fun and awesome for venting. So yeah, today was a good day. <laughs> Also, one of the reasons that I am tired. Black Death trying to get naval factories back online in the water here. He is now slugging it out with the final Valiant class. You can see the brutal DPS that that commander puts out with its torpedoes. The naval factory is going to go down, unfortunately, but that destroyer is not long for this world. There goes the final salvo of torpedoes is going to go down. The Wagners have discovered the ACU. Not sure why they've stopped. Well, there's a lot of torpedo defense in there. Yeah, they were never going to make it anyway. So, they do actually have torpedoes. They're not really good for much, but they do have torpedoes. Nothing that's going to impact the ACU, though, as high as that health margin is. Bricks might have had a little bit better chance. Actually, if you work out the mass, <clears throat> Wagners are roughly equivalent to T1 subs. Not entirely, but they're not as far behind as you would think. Because they do cost more mass, and they have slightly less DPS. But they have so much health. Um, the 1400 health really helps it out. I'm trying desperately to remember what the final tally was. I actually did the math on it because the last time the balance was up for um, up for argument, my argument was the hover tanks are roughly mass equivalent to frigates, but they're slower. So we should make the Wagner's torpedo damage. Oh wow, that is carnage. That is like Custer's last stand right there. I mean, just wow. Ambush city. Why Why was that even a thing? Why did they run into all that point defense? Um, we should make the Wagners equivalent to T1 subs. Where, like, with hover, if the hover gets in range of frigates in mass equivalent numbers, sometimes the hover wins, a lot of times the frigates win. Like, they're slightly less because they don't have the range that the frigates do. We should do the same thing with the Wagners, to where the Wagners can kill T1 subs if they get in range, but they're slower with slightly smaller range. So that way, Wagners actually would be kind of useful at least, at least they would be on par with T1 subs. They're not quite there. I think when I did the math on it, they need like two more DPS or something like that. And if you're talking about torpedo damage, you're not talking about influencing the actual combat potential of the tank on land, so you're not influencing how effective it is as a rating unit. So I don't really see any reason why not. I should actually go make a post in the balance form. That would be the smart thing to do because then people would actually hear me. All right, that is a, that is bad luck frigate right there. Being tagged by all of those bombers, that is massive, massive overkill. It is going to die a horribly painful death very shortly. Unless, what? Oh, wow. All of the torpedo bombers were targeting one of the radar blips, the false blips from that Thunderhead class. Well, who said jamming never did anything for you? There's the proof right there. They're continuing to fire at that stupid blip. Why are they not firing? There we go, finally got off a shot. Well, they're going to abandon that. That was an epic fail if I've ever seen one. That was a horrendous failure of an assault. All right, three cruisers online, making it very hard to do anything in this bay. Corsairs and the Torp Bombers. What are those things called? Cormorant, whatever. I'm going to come in and try to eliminate those threats. Unfortunately, that was targeting a Cooper. 
Why are they targeting Coopers and not the Bruisers? That makes absolutely no sense. On the left hand side, Black Death has gotten T3 land online. The HQ is in the back, I think. Yep, there it is. Right there. And that means that that T3 unit ran all the way from the home base. Wow, that was a long trek for you, bud. Nope, those are hoplites. Never mind. I could have sworn there was a loyalist. But apparently I was sadly mistaken. These guys are still wreaking havoc. 33 kills, 27, 72 kills, and 40. We've even got 34, 85, and 57 on the cruisers. These guys... This is true veterancy right here. These guys have been kicking ass and taking names for like 15 minutes now, this same group, and they are still on the case. That is awesome. I'm gonna bump up the speed just a hair here. Still building Corsairs. Hopefully he will be able to eliminate some more of those UEF cruisers. The Wow. That commander's getting awfully brave. We got both commanders in the water in the locket. Black Death snagging an upgrade. What is that going to be? That was T3. Oh, he didn't even have T3 commander there. Corsair is going to successfully take out another one of the cruisers. Get down to half health on that one. But hey, there's ASF to save the day along with those cruisers. That means that air control is completely and totally in the hands of Shades of Blue. This assault on the left. Now these T1 point defense are actually looking kind of useful. The Salems are, however, going to wreck the party as they always do. Just hammering away at these point defense formations. Gotta hate that that rock gets in the way, but they are slowly but surely making progress. This is where you gotta watch what they're doing and move to the other side so that you can align your guns with a clear passage. See, this is exactly where I would not have my commander. Because, yeah, you've got some ASF out there, but a sufficient number of torpedo bombers or a sudden shift in air control could potentially mean a dead ACU. Harm's going down in the water. That's going to lay down a ton of damage until those cruisers spot it, and then they will be ground fired on top of the harm, and that will be that end of harm prioritizing the build power though see this is where build power is critical black death sitting on 172 mass per tick income relatively well balanced shades of blue is on 143 it looks like no 90 wowzers that's what you get for losing your outside expansions he just took a severe dip on mass income but that's what you get for losing your build power right there you're just not ever able to get enough units online to actually make a difference there's the swap in air control we were all waiting for black death has once again snatched control of the skies away from shades of blue and now he needs to work on some form of sniping solution i do think i'm not the master here i do not know everything but if i were him that is what i would be doing because that is a vulnerable commander if i've ever seen one there's only three cruisers oh there's a strap bomber coming in Ooh, thankfully there's ASF that, that thing's going directly for the build power there's the bomb not sure what that's all about there he goes in for the drop on a T2P gen gonna take out a handful of engineers and that T2 generator and the ASF are going to clobber it out of the skies not the best run I've ever seen for a strat not the best by a long shot that was a T3 HQ. So sad that a battleship couldn't come out of that. Very, very sad. I would have loved to see that. He is going to go for T2 sub, though, it looks like. There are exactly zero Coopers again. Hey, if your opponent is UEF and your opponent refuses to build Coopers, there's absolute. Oh! What? No! The ACU walked in range of the harms for a second there. That almost ended very, very badly. The Harms just have such brutally high DPS. He shed a third of his health 
in just a couple of firings. Man. Now those cruisers are ground firing the harms. Yeah, he's got to get rid of those. Again, why is your ACU so freaking far out in the open? Hover coming in. Finally, hover being put to use. We're gonna come into range with all of these high vet units and nope, there they go. You gotta use that range. All the torque bombers dying painful deaths. Now Hubbard does severely outmatch T2 units as far as DPS versus mass cost goes. So Hover will win versus T2 Navy if it gets all up in the middle of your units. But if you're able to pull back and use your range, Hover tank should theoretically never be able to touch your T2 units as long as you're kiting effectively. All right, Black Death moving forward once again. Does he have stealth on his commander? That's the question. It looks like he may actually does have stealth. Alright, so if he can throw down a harm way out here. Nope, he is retreating. I was about to say, if he could throw down a harm. No. No. He's gonna die to freaking barracudas because he's so far out in the water. No. Don't do that. And he's gone. Wow. That was actually a tense fight. Let's see if I can get the eco number. 77 for Black Death and 120 freaking four. Almost 125. Wow. 50,000 mass reclaim discrepancy between these two players. That is unheard of. Like, as far as a one versus one on this rank level, where you should theoretically have two roughly equal players. I have no idea how Shades of Blue managed to get that much more reclaim when he was continually dumping naval wrecks into his opponent's base. This was not looking very healthy. <clears throat> I think Black Death was going to win this anyway, but Shades of Blue just ridiculously overextended with his commander there. I'm not sure what that was all about. Man. Finally killed off all of those naval units, I think. Let me go back to Observer. Nope, they're parked out there. All right. Very, very interesting game. A lot going on there. At some point during the game, I kind of gave up on trying to keep track of everything because my brain is just fried. I am sorry about that. The mini-map is up, though, and hopefully with the higher resolution and everything else... You will be able to tell what was going on, and I'm sure there will be a load of comments with things that I missed, and that such is life. I, I can't help it this time around. Alrighty, guys. This is officially my last good, good, good replay. I have a couple that are castable, and again, I don't mean this to be offensive to anybody who sent me replays. The reality is that a lot of games just are not castable. They are exciting to play in. A steamroll is awesome to play. It's so much fun, but watching a steamroll is not fun, and at the same time, watching a very long, drawn-out, boring game is not fun, just, you know, for an ending. So, I, I, I have watched the replays, but I, a lot of them I just can't use, so it's just a fact of life. If you have any replays, please send them to me. Um, just send me the replay file to the email in the description. That is the best way to do it with the least chance of having a desync. And if you absolutely cannot for some reason or another, just send me that replay ID and I can look it up that way. But there is a much higher chance of it being desynced or corrupted if you share it in that manner. Alrighty guys, that is gonna wrap up this game. Hopefully you enjoyed it somewhat. I'm gonna get out of here and get this cast uploaded. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next cast.